Okay, so in this video I'm going to describe to you the steps of Grover's algorithm and um, why it runs in square root of n steps. And then it won't be clear to you how we actually implement the steps yet. So we'll, in the next video I'll show you how we actually implement the steps. Here's the problem again. We are given a table of with capital N entries, one of which is special, and we want to find that special entry. Okay, so there are two steps to the algorithm. The first is called phase inversion. So let me assume that the special entry is x star. So f of x star equal to 1, that's what we are looking for. So at any given iteration of the algorithm, so the, the algorithm will work in a number of iterations. And actually, the number of iterations is going to be square root of n. So at any iteration, what the algorithm maintains is a superposition over all x. So it maintains some superposition, sum over all x of alpha x, x. Now, as you can imagine, initially, we have no idea what, which value x we are looking for. So initially, all these alpha sub x's are going to be equal and equal to 1 over square root of n. Okay, now, what does this phase inversion step do? What it does is it changes the superposition like this. If x is not equal to x prime, sorry, if x is not the special element, then it just leaves it alone. But f, if x is the special element, then it inverts the phase. So it replaces it by minus alpha x star x star. OK, so let me show you what this means pictorially. So let's say that this is our point x star. So that's the amplitude of x star. That's x star minus 1. That's x star plus 1. So what happens here? Well, that's x star plus 1. That's x star minus 1. And so all this and this is left unchanged. What happens to this one is that it gets inverted. So instead of this amplitude, now we replace it by that. OK, so whatever it was, we take minus of that. OK, so that's the first operation. The second operation is called inversion about the mean. So again, we, we start with the superposition sum alpha x x of all x. And now, what does this inversion about the mean do? So we let mu be the mean. So it's summation of alpha x divided by n. So it's just the average value. It's the average value of all the amplitudes. So here, I don't know what it looks like. Maybe just eyeballing it, possibly that might be the average. So now what we do is we flip the amplitudes about this mean. So what does it mean to flip it? What it does is alpha x gets mapped to 2 times mu minus alpha x, meaning that summation alpha x x goes to summation 2 mu minus alpha x. What's 2 mu minus alpha x? It's, it's just mu plus mu minus alpha x. So what does this mean? What it's saying is, say that alpha x is smaller than mu. Then what does it do? It takes, say it's smaller by this value. Then what it does is it takes mu plus however much it's smaller. So it flips it up by exactly the same amount. And the same thing happens if it's above. It flips it down by exactly the same amount. So the new amplitudes would look something like this. So that's what inversion about the mean does. Now, it should not be a priori clear to you that inversion about the mean 
is a unitary transformation, leave alone that, can be, that it can be implemented efficiently. It might be a little bit more clear to some of you that inversion, that phase inversion is a unitary operation. And then if you can guess how to implement it, then that's a really great thing. Okay, but, but we are going to see how to do that in the next video. Okay. Okay, so now let me try to show you how Grover's algorithm works given these two primitives. Okay, so as I said, initially we know nothing at all about the marked element, and so we start with all our amplitudes equal and equal to 1 over square root n. Then what do we do? Well, we do a phase inversion. So now the marked element, instead of having amplitude 1 over square root n, it has amplitude minus 1 over square root n. Now we want to do an inversion about the mean. So what's the mean? Well, it would have been 1 over square root n if we hadn't done the phase inversion. What the phase inversion does is it lowers the mean just a little bit. Okay, so what happens now when we invert about the mean? Well, everything except S, x star, its amplitude drops by a little bit. It drops as much below the mean as, as it was above the mean before. But now what happens to x star? Well, when we flip it up, it goes as much above this mean as it was below. Well, it was below by about 2 over square root n. So it goes up 2 over square root n approximately above this mean. And the mean was approximately at 1 over square root n. So x star got its amplitude increased by about 2 over square root n in these two steps. Right? It increased from 1 over square root n to 3 over square root n, roughly. OK, so now how do we proceed from here? Well, since this works so well for us, what we're going to do is just keep doing these steps over and over again. What I claim is that if we do this, these steps over and over again, we just, you know, if we do phase inversion followed by inversion by mean, each time we do this, we increase this amplitude of x star by about 2 over square root n. So assuming this is the case, we'll go to 5 over square root n, 7 over square root n, 9 over square root n. We just keep going this way. And in roughly square root n steps, we'll have increased this amplitude to about 1 over square root 2. At this point, if we were to measure the chance that we see x star, the, the, the needle in the haystack, the marked element that we are looking for, is roughly 1 over 2. It's the square of this, this amplitude. And so then we are done. In roughly square root n steps, we'd have found the marked element. So now let's, you know, all this was slightly approximate, you know, because, because we, were, we were sort of assuming that the mean is not really decreasing that much, that we really get an improvement of 2 over square root n at each step. So let's rigorously justify this. OK, so to rigorously justify this, let's try to figure out what's the amplitude of the rest of the elements when the needle has amplitude 1 over square root 2. Well, then there's 1 over square root 2 amplitude to be, to be distributed among basically n other elements. So each of them has amplitude at least 1 over square root 2n. It's actually 1 over square root 2n minus 1, but it's at least 1 over square root 2n. So now, at this point, how much improvement are we making per step? Where by a step, I mean phase inversion followed by inversion about the mean. Well, here's, here's how to think about it. So let's draw a picture. So, so at, the, at the start, we have, we have everything else 
and then then we do a do a phase inversion on the on the needle there's everything else and what's this amplitude we know that this is greater than or equal to 1 over square root 2n right so as long as we are running the algorithm, we know that these, these amplitudes are at least 1 over square root 2n. And so when we do an inversion about the mean, how much do we increase this amplitude? Well, we are doing an inversion about something which is very close to 1 over square root 2n. So the improvement per step is at least 2 divided by square root 2n, which is square root of 2 over n. So that's how much improvement we get per step. And then let's conclude that we will reach 1 over square root 2 in all the square root n steps. So to reach 1 over square root 2, how many steps do we need? Well, we need this divided by improvement per step. Okay. So we have to improve by 1 over square root 2. The improvement per step is square root 2 over n. So the number of steps is at most. So this is the improvement we want. In each step we get at least this much improvement. So the number of steps is bounded by this over this, which is square root of n over Okay, so that's the analysis of Grover's algorithm. Now, how do we actually implement these steps? Well, we'll see that in the next video.